Hi everyone, uh, today we're going to do a, I want to do a painting from my sketchbook. Now this one, this watercolour I did, oh gosh, a couple of years ago, and it was just a sketch I did outside of a view of the Malvern Hills. Now I like the sketch, but uh, I want to do uh, a painting from it now, but I like a little bit more foreground in it. And I do remember when I was there, I went forward and painted this, but behind me there were some trees overhanging. <clears throat> and uh, some bushes so kind of this this is going to be an exercise really in how I take one of my sketches and I um, then go on to kind of like change things around a bit more to make a successful painting from it in the studio so I hope this will be of some use to you so we'll see how it develops as we go along okay I've sketched out the uh, I've roughly sketched out the drawing I've put the hills in here slightly smaller than the sketch I put overhanging trees here um, to add a little bit of interest to the top of the painting and also I've put some bushes coming in the foreground I've got the uh, the cornfield here uh, about kind of just uh, sort of like a third of the way up maybe that the page um, and in the front I've put some foxgloves or some plants and I'll just make some grassy tufts just to give it a foreground so we've got basically a background middle ground and foreground in our painting and that's kind of like three requirements that make a successful painting not always but in this case is what I'm looking for so we'll have our nice sunny sky then we'll have the cornfields then we'll have the shrubbery grass and scrub and that type of thing in the foreground and then some uh, foxgloves or something coming up to give it a bit of interest on either side and uh, but the main component is the Malvern Hills in the background because that's what people around here will recognize so uh, we'll paint them in and they'll be a nice sort of bluey silhouetted color in the background okay I've mixed up some blues here which I'm going to use for I've got some cerulean blue and some cobalt blue and in the cobalt blue I put just a touch of cad red just to grey it out slightly to make it a little bit more on the neutral side so it's not so uh, bright I suppose and I'm just going to paint in the sky when I go over the hills that distance it's all going to be quite dark back there so it doesn't matter if I go over the over the, uh, the, the Malvern Hills over the hills at the back there it'll be fine I'll start off with that now just paint it in loosely with a brush I don't want to keep my brushwork as lively as possible throughout the painting I'm just changing the blue a little bit there just adding a little bit of cerulean blue to the to the wash and then I'm just going to take that down basically to where the trees start in the distance Then I'm going to mix some yellow for the cornfield. So I've got a bit of yellow ochre. Oh, I don't know. Yeah. And a bit of lemon yellow. Don't know if that's right. And a touch, just warm up it, touch cad red. Okay. And this is the cornfield. I want to leave a couple of little uh, white spaces here for when I put in the foxgloves because I want that colour to be quite bright. Warm that up a bit. Again, leave some white spaces. So you've got to paint around them. Don't be too particular. I'm not being too particular with it. Just enough to uh, just to show off some colour. I'm just warming up a bit with a bit more. Got a bit of light red in there just to make it a bit browner as I come towards the foreground just like 
that. Now take that down a bit to where the... Uh... Right, so now I've got to work quite quickly here because I've got to get in the green for the foreground where the shrubbery is. So I'm just going to have a bit of lemon yellow. I'll put that in there. And a bit of cobalt blue. A bit of cobalt blue and a bit of red just to neutralise it a bit. I don't like my greens too bright and I want that to kind of mix into the, the wash slightly to soften it in places. A bit of brown. Again on this side, same on this side, just loose strokes, loose brushwork. You know, we're just going for a simple approach here of a landscape. Bit of brown in the foreground. You'd want to keep your greens all the same. And a little bit of burnt umber. That's from where the path comes through. So basically we've tinted the page all over now with a bit of colour. So we've taken that white paper away. And now we can build on what we've got. Gonna we'll add a little bit of uh, magenta in. Just to add some interest in places. Okay. Okay. just where the field is. While it's still wet I'm just dropping in some colour, bringing the foreground a bit closer. So this is kind of the wet into wet technique. And as that dries we can come back to it. But a lot of this you can't really you can't teach it it's about the more you practice the more you'll get a feel for it um, it's, it's about getting a feel for the what the paint's doing at what stage it's drying when you can go back into it when you can't and a lot of that is just literally practice you're not gonna necessarily um, well you can't really teach it I don't think you can anyway it's just sort of feel for it but that you know you can get that quick. It's not it's not something that's um, you know difficult to master necessarily. It's just take, like I say, it's just practice. It's like everything, you know, it's keep going at it. And uh, okay, I'll leave that at that. Wait for that to dry, and then we'll come back to it and uh, do the next bit. Okay, now that's dry, I just want to uh, just put in with some blue. I'm just going to use some cobalt blue. Actually, no, I'm going to use some ultramarine. Ultramarine blue. Just stick it in there, be fine. Ultramarine blue with a touch, just a touch of cadmium red. And just see my pencil marks just to sketch in the the hills in the background and beyond 
Bring it right off the page. Right off the page that way. Oh, I want them quite blue. Because that's how they look in the summer. Sort of bluey grey colour. Now I'm just going to swap my brush. I'm going to use my little goat hair. There we go, my little goat hair Chinese brush. A bit more paint. Make sure it's thick enough. I've got my wash, my colour of paint now, so it's ultramarine with some cab red. I just want to add some different values to it, just dropping it into the wash while it's wet. Just so it's not too flat. Because we've got the trees to go in there. In here. So we've just got to wait for that to dry. Then we can put our trees in. In front of the hills. Okay then, I've mixed myself various greens then to start putting the trees in back underneath the hills. I want it quite dark. I've mixed kind of quite neutral grey greens. There's a couple of lighter ones, but they're not the lighter ones aren't going to stand out that much uh, because obviously they're on quite a dark background. But uh, we could get quite a nice effect with those. But I want some really nice dark greens, and for that I've used Windsor Blue, um, a bit of uh, cadmium yellow, and a touch of crimson, just to darken it down a bit. So let's just see what happens. Let's just play around with it. So I'm looking at referring to my sketch, and I'm just kind of just. I want to keep the brushwork quite. Pick up some lighter greens. I'm not trying to paint every individual tree. I'm looking at it as a whole, a whole mass of trees. So I'm not trying to paint, like I say, um, different trees. I'm just going to get a bit of uh, texture on these. I'm just going to pick up a bristle brush. Just to get a bit of texture down where the, cor where the trees meet the corn field. And what you want to be careful when you're doing things like this, putting a row of trees in, you don't get some kind of repeating pattern go, going. You want to keep everything as random as possible. The trees get bigger this side and they're slightly closer. There's some lighter ones in here. Go back to my some nice tall trees here, some poplars. Again, I'm not trying to paint them all in. <coughs> I'm not I'm not sort of thinking about trees really, I'm thinking about the overall shape opposed to actually the trees themselves shapes makes it easier Too dark. so I'm just mixing some Prussian blue a bit of red a bit of yellow to make some kind of green a nice dark green just to put in the shadows and that's going to do really for that. I don't want to fiddle too much. There, that's fine. Okay, we'll just wait for that to dry and then we'll come back and do the next bit. Okay, now that's dry. Um, 
what I want to do is the greens I mix for the trees in the background I want to keep that for later so I can use that in some of the foreground and um, in places where the, where the branches are coming down from the tree so I don't want to lose those so I'm going to use another palette now to mix some um, cleaner colour just to suggest some detail in the cornfield the front of the cornfield here where it's where it meets the where it's the edge and it's going to be slightly darker where it all grows up and just dot some detail in through the back but I don't want to touch that too much because I, just, I quite just like the, the the pure colour through there it looks quite nice okay for this I'm going to use my hake brush okay I want to keep my brushes quite big so I'm just going to use a bit of just try and ruffle up the edge of it So that's just sort of showing where the edge of the of the cornfield was. Just want to soften it slightly at the bottom and maybe places at the top so it's not, not, not a hard line. Just make it look a bit more natural. Just going to introduce a few more colours in there. A few darks as well. I'm going to go back to my bristle brush, this one, Terry Harrison brush. I think it's just, which is very useful, just to add a little bit of suggested detail in the cornfield. I just want to soften it again because it won't look natural if you've got hard lines. So you've got to keep it soft and Looking natural. This is the pathway that leads just leave that for a minute. Okay, we're gonna just put some of these um Fox gloves in now. Just going to suggest those. For that, I'm just going to use some kind of pinky purple colour. Soft, just lighten that slightly. It's a bit dull. Some more here. Again, I'm not sort of painting them too perfectly. I'm just suggesting them with a very small tip. The tip of uh, okay, let me get in focus. The tip of a brush, just to suggest the flowers. We don't want to make it look too sort of ordered. Okay, we'll leave it like that for a time being. We might come back and have a little play with those later. So we've got our hills in, we've got our cornfield, we've got our foxgloves, we've got tr trees. Okay, now we're going to concentrate on the branches coming down a bit, just to give a bit more mystery to the hills by obscuring it slightly. And for that... Okay, now for the branches, I'm just going to use some burnt umber and a little bit of cobalt blue. And I'm just going to kind of imagine a tree, how it would grow out. So I'm going to take some of the branches out from here. And some. Using some broken brush strokes as well. I don't want them all solid and hard. Um, we're just putting the main ones in at this stage. Also I need to be careful I don't comp completely 
um, obscure the hills. Okay, now I'm going to have to move to a smaller brush. Wait a minute, we'll have some leaves on there just to kind of uh, soften up a bit. In fact, we'll put some on now. I'll start with my lightest green first. And I'm just using the tip of the brush to suggest the leaves. I don't want to put, I don't want to leave plenty of sky holes to make it look natural. Now I'm just changing the green to a slightly darker green. Making the leaves denser in places. Just change the colour a bit. So always think about changing your, your greens. Don't Try not to make them all the same, is what I'm trying to say. Keep keep varying them. I did make a slight error there because I've obscured the top of that mount, the top of that hill, which I would rather not have with that brush stroke. But once you've made a mistake like that, you've got to then just accept it and work with it. There's no point getting upset about it or. You know. So we'll leave that like that for the time being and we might come back and make some alterations to it later. Just see one little glaring place that needs a few more leaves. There we go. Okay. I'm going to put another little fox glove just in here. I don't know why, just feel a fancy one there. Now I want to concentrate on making something more of the foliage down in the foreground. Bit of shadow and then we're done. So, go back to my bigger brush because I don't want to be fiddling with two smaller brushes. gloves look a bit more natural by introducing some green around them. Again I'm, keep, I'm not fiddling, I don't want to be getting too fiddly. Just suggesting some bigger leaves at the bottom. And I work both sides at the same time so I don't okay let's just have a look. Some darker colour down here. I also want to get a little bit of splatter going on. Just flicking it with my brush. Careful not to get it over the sky or anything like that. 
but uh, basically the object of the exercise is to try and keep everything looking as fresh and not overworked as possible you know if we want a photographic reproduction then you know you as i said many times you know you're going to just get your camera out take a photograph aren't you that can do it done slightly better than i can um but i'm, I'm after an impression of the scene and just trying to make a nice scene from you know the time i spent there doing my sketch in my book and then coming back and kind of translating that to to watercolour yeah and making it fun now if you've enjoyed the video please uh give it a thumbs up it's always helpful and uh, leave a comment if you wish if you've got anything you want to say good or bad i don't mind and um yeah subscribe yeah become subscribed so you'll be alerted to when new videos come online bit more spatter down there of this brownie colour just to show some little pebbles in the foreground because there was lots of little stones down there and I'm just going to take the just to add a bit more interest I'm just going to take the rigger with a bit of green on it or dark colour and I'm just going to draw some leaf shapes just to suggest some leaves, leaf and greenery in places very randomly. I look at the marks I've made already and then I look where I can see kind of leaf, leaf shapes, leaf patterns and then go back into them. So I'll just add a little bit of grassy detail in places. And again with the uh, with the floor just a little bit of dry brush in places just dragging your brush over the surface and let the paint catch in places just adds a bit of texture and a bit of interest but I'm going to leave it at that Oh, we'll just uh, I'll take it off the board and I'll put a mount round it, and we'll have a look what it looks like. See what see what we think. Okay, there we have it. <clears throat> okay, there we have it with the mount on. I kind of crispens up all the edges and lets you see what the actual painting is. So I'm quite pleased with that. I quite like the little bit of mystery the tree gives to the mount at the hills in the background. Um, I like the strength of colour throughout the picture, throughout the painting, and I also like the fact that. <clears throat> I resisted the temptation to fiddle with two br smaller brushes. I kept my brushes quite big and I worked quite bold and quite fresh and kept the colours clean. And kind of that's the secret to a successful watercolour, I suppose. Oh, in my case, anyway. Um, you know, getting, getting the values right, the colour values right throughout the painting is important. If you end up with a painting that... A lot of amateur paintings are spoilt. They're great drawings and they're, they're quite good paintings, but they just haven't got the strength of colour. Um, they're too washed out. They look too anemic. So bear in mind the colour as you're working. 
Um, remembering that your water colour will always dry um, a bit lighter on your, uh, it'll always dry lighter on the paper. So uh, anyway, I hope that was of some use to you. It's a short demo, short, short exercise on painting a landscape for one of my sketchbooks. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. So don't forget to give it a thumbs up and like and subscribe if you want to see more. So bye for now.